Hi, Alex here from Sonic Reaction Studios. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Many thanks. If you want to create multi-track recordings, but your musician contributors can't be in the same place as you, this is a way to do it. You'll be able to hear their audio as they are laying it down and do retakes if anything needs improving. You can give them a guide track to record against and you'll have a talkback channel to provide feedback so you can work together with your musicians to create the perfect recording. We're using a technique of streaming over the internet that's relatively easy for the contributors. They don't need much equipment or software and part one of this video is for them. You'll need a bit more of both, so this video is for you. You record each musician separately to build up your multi-track recording. Here's the overall setup and signal flow. Our guide track from the DAW goes through a software interface to link to the Source Connect Now internet streaming service, which sends it to our contributor over the internet. The return audio from the contributor comes back same way, more or less through this interface and into my DAW. The DAW we're using is Studio One from PreSonus. We use two products from VB Audio for the interface, Voice Meter and Hi-Fi Audio Cable. And the internet streaming service is from Source Elements. It's called Source Connect Now, as you can see. There are links for the products I'm using in the description. You may already have a DAW you use, but if not, there's a free version of Studio One available. Source Connect Now is free at the moment at entry level and the VB Audio products are shareware, so you can try them out before contributing. I'm not going to go into detail on how to install and set up these products, as there are other videos you can look at to get these up and running. I'm now going to set up Voice Meter for our session. Voice Meter has two hardware inputs, one, two, and one virtual input. These can be switched onto two buses. Bus A, goes out to my hardware speakers and bus B is my virtual output. The virtual inputs and outputs can handle up to eight tracks. When I connect Studio One to Voice Meter, the virtual input will come from Studio One's send and I want to connect that to bus B so that I can send it out to Source Connect and out to my contributor. For my speaker device on bus A, I'm going to select my UMC ASIO output, it is there, and plug my headphones into the UMC. Now, the 8-track virtual output is sent to Source Connect, as I said before, but it also goes to Studio One inputs. If I set virtual output bus B to composite, tracks one and two will be stereo, from bus B, which is what I want to send to Source Connect. However, virtual output tracks 5 and 6 will come from input 1, regardless of my fader or burst settings, and virtual output tracks 7 and 8 will come from input 2, and it's these ones that I'm going to feed into Studio 1. I'm going to connect input 1 to Source Connect Return through VB Audio Cable, and I'm going to connect hardware input 2 to my local microphone. Now, I could actually use my camcorder microphone if I wanted to, but I prefer to use my UMC microphone, the local microphone that I've got on UMC input 3. However, if I set it to one of these, because I'm using this UMC ASIO driver for some reason, it doesn't quite work that way, and I have to reset the menu do some settings here. Go to menu, system settings, and set this up to three, input four. That's it. So that's three and four, which is my UMC inputs three and four, which is the ones I want. Um, close that, and then I set this to no device, and you'll see now it's the ASU input three and four that I'm getting on this one, and that's my local microphone. I talked in part one about setting the collaborator's line speed to get the best sound for the internet connection and how busy the network is.
But another thing that could cause clicks and burrs is your buffer size on voice meter. It's up here. If you're getting problems, try increasing that before reducing line speeds or picking a different time for your recording. You do this using the menu up here and settings. And you can see the maximum size for ASIO is 1024. If you want to go higher than that, you can use WDM, which will give you up to 2048. Of course, if you want to go that high and use WDM, you'll have to reset your hardware out to use the WDM driver and also, obviously, your input device as well. OK, I need to set up Studio One now for my recording session. So far, I've loaded the song that I'm going to use. In this example, I've already recorded drum parts, instrumental parts and some vocal parts using a mix of local and remote recording. Still got it as a rough mix, but rough mix is good enough for adding the BV, the backing vocal, that I'm going to add for this session. So that's BV2. So the first thing I need to do then is to set up Studio One so that it handles the voice meter virtual inputs and outputs. That's options, audio setup, audio device, and select voice meter virtual. Yep, that's it. OK. And then the next thing I need to do is to set my song, my inputs and outputs up the way I want. I'm going to use a setting I've used before, which is mono. Voice meter mono. As I said before, voice meter has eight virtual inputs and eight virtual outputs. On the outputs, I only need tracks one and two, which is what I'm feeding to Source Connect. On my inputs, I'm interested in tracks five and seven. Five is coming from my Source Connect input, and seven is my local mic that I'm going to use as top back. So that's that sorted out. So now I've got, and you can see that my local mic is actually coming in on input two. Haven't connected up Source Connect yet, which is why there's nothing coming in on that. Now my contributor, as I said, is going to add to this track, BV2, so that's the thing I want to set to Source Connect, which is there. That's one. And the talk, my talkback mic, I want to send out on my talkback channel. So I'll monitor and enable that. Oh, I need to set it to the inputs first. There we go, track two, and monitor and enable it. I'm going to use this Mutomatic plugin which is really quite good. As you can see, it's, it's sending out audio at the moment when there's no transport running. But as soon as I start to run out transport, you'll see that it actually mutes. So let me just run that transport. There you are, you can see it mutes. So that means that there's no talkback going out, distracting anybody or getting onto the recording or anything like that when I'm actually doing the recording work. This is a free VST plugin from Sound Radix. Okay, so now when I'm recording, let me just put that down again. When I'm recording, I usually like to do a couple of takes of each each element. So let me set my recording mix to takes to layers, and as you'll see, that will uh, give me some extra layers. Just uh, so way Studio One works and allows you to to then comp between them. On my Chrome browser, I need to sign in on Source Connect now and start the connection. There are other videos that will show you how to do that. Here we are, signed in and ready to go. I'm going to send the mix the contributor is going to use as a guide track down the line. And to do that, I found that 128 kilobits mono is fine for that kind of purpose. You don't need anything faster and it would just place undue strain on the internet connection. Give yourself as good an internet connection as you can get. I have this PC cable directly to the router rather than using Wi-Fi. Now I've got to send the send 
to voice meter output. So, because that's where my input's coming from. Output, voice meter output, there we go. And the receive to audio cable, which is going to feed into my input on voice meter, if you remember. And you just have to remember when you've done that to refresh with new settings. I'll just put these sound effects off before I do that. Right. Now we can proceed to the recording, which I showed in video one from the contributor's point of view. From the recording end, there'll be some delay between your audio going out and their contribution coming back in. What I tend to do is to listen to voice meter. My headphones, remember, are connected to bus A. So I'll listen to the output going out, which is this one, first of all. And then if that, you know, that, as long as that's going out, then I'll switch to this and listen to the audio coming in just to check that the internet connection is working fine. You can use voice meter, as I said, to switch between the two. If you think the sound that's coming in is a bit dicey, it's a good idea to get your contributor to also record a contribution locally. That way you can always patch up your audio if need be. But so far, I've never needed to do that. Right, we've got everything set up um, and all we need to do now is for our contributor to join us. Here we are. That's it. We're connected. OK, we're ready to go. And Denise is our recording engineer. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Okay. That was great, um, but we'll Good. do that again. Um, okay. And are you ready? Yes. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Your love is lifting me. Keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Great, that's good. Uh, thank you. And we'll do that one more time. Same again? Yeah, just give me a second till I have a drink. I just had a drink. Okay. Okay, I'm ready now. And... Okay, off we go. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Your love is lifting me. Keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Your love is lifting me, keeps on lifting me, is lifting me higher. Very good. Thank you very much. That's us finished. Thank you. We finished our recordings and terminated our session with the contributor. So we can close off Chrome and Voice Meter and just concentrate on our DAW. As I mentioned earlier, there is a delay between your guide track going out and your contributor's sound coming back, which could be up to two seconds, depending on the route through the internet. So we need to bring the contributor's recording into line with the other tracks. This is easy to do in Studio One.
we'll just select all the events on the track expand it up a little bit there you go and so there's the by bv1 and here's bv2 so you can see the delay there in this case it's about half a second i think or maybe a, yeah about half a second oh you know you love your love is Okay, so we need to bring that into line and all we do is drag it and click and drag let's try that no not quite there that looks good let's try it. Sounds okay. Let's go to chorus two. Now it's just a wee bit. Let's push it back a bit. I like to try and get. I, I could, of course, do each of these clips individually. In fact, that's what I'll do now. Right. And then back on to chorus one. Pull this one a little bit like that. Go on to chorus two. Um, chorus two, that's okay. And go on to chorus three. Yeah, that's fine. That's all done now. You may notice when I zoom right out that the takes aren't often necessarily quite in sync. This is take one there, and there's take two starts marginally faster. You will get some of that kind of variation on the internet, but usually that's not. It's it's still reasonably good, and it, and the, you can. It's quite easy still to comp between these two and just do fine adjustments when you're messing around. So anyway. That's our session done. This is Alex from Sonic Reaction Studios and I hope this video has been interesting and useful. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel and providing feedback. Thanks for watching.